There's only one way to learn hacking, and that is to actually hack. So I have here a pretty web application. If I put in a font, I get four fonts out of it. If I paste a mysterious looking payload, open my hacking computer, start a netcat reverse shell listener, and then hit send, all of a sudden, I can run commands on the underlying server purely by clicking a button. Okay, fine. A single button and some text. So what is that payload? What is happening here? And how is this all possible? Now we can look at the Docker file to figure out what's happening, but who cares about the setup? You know, let's go straight to the Python code. Now I'm talking about run.py. It's got um, an app from application main and it runs it on all interfaces, port 1337. Let's look at main.py to figure out what app is. And it's a Flask app. Who would have thought? And we're using Flask Maco templates. So we clearly have a typical Python template web server. Then let's look at routes.py, which is actually doing the template rendering. You have the index function, which takes in the text parameter uh, that's in the URL. And if it exists, it runs a spookify function. And that spookify function is what converts a regular text string into all those different fonts. We don't really have to worry about that right now, but it's just, you know, a bunch of dictionaries, just a bunch of mapping. That's all it's doing, really. But then after it converts those fonts, it runs a generate render function. Now, this is different to the function we just saw earlier because right now they're just creating a string and um, the string has all the converted fonts. You know, we've got the four fonts, sure. And finally, it takes that raw string that we just generated and creates a template object and then runs the render command. Now here is the flow of all of the steps where user input ends up in the template. Number one, the text parameter. Text parameter has user input, which is then passed into spookify function. And the spookify function now does no input validation and instead calls change font directly. What does change font do? It just converts the fonts. It doesn't really do anything either from a security perspective. And then this finally goes into generate render. Generate render as a function creates a random template from an arbitrary string which contains user input and renders it. This means you can add whatever you want in the template. And based on Mako's documentation, this means you can execute whatever Python code you want. Now, anything in between a dollar sign and squiggly brackets is treated as Python. And when the template renders, that Python code runs. And that my friends, is called server-side template injection. This is the index.html template. Anything that is provided in the output variable when the template is being rendered is dynamically loaded in by Macro. And that's how it works. So now it is time to test. I'll pull up my burp suite. I have my own browser. I'll go to the main website. And on the website, let's try the simple payload that we saw earlier, which is, let's do the dollar, dollar sign, squiggly brackets, seven times seven. Now, if this is successful, the output should be 49. Not seven times seven, 49, and there it is. There's our template injection. Um, I'll send that to the repeater, and from the repeater, let's uh, send that again, and load the output in the inbuilt browser. Damn, CSS is going crazy. This website is how my brain feels 24 seven. Now that we have a point of injection, let me introduce you to my best friend, Payload All The Things. Now this GitHub repository is a hacker's nightmare, wet dream, goals, aspirations, everything rolled into one single website. Once you're in the right folder, look for Mako template and you will find 400,000 lines, 400,000 lines of payloads on how you can convert a server-side template injection into remote code execution. I can explain these payloads to you, but that's a different video. I will just run these payloads. And when I do, the resulting return value is zero because, well, os.system, when it successfully runs a command, it just returns zero. Now, instead of os.system, you can always use another module like subprocess. I always try sleep 10 first to see if the website takes 10 seconds to respond. Um, and if it does, you definitely know that you're achieving shellcode execution on the underlying server. I'll hit the SpongeBob. 12 minutes later. Okay, sweet. So that packet took 10 seconds, as you can see on the bottom right corner of this uh, screen. Now that we know that we have code execution, I will find a reverse shell payload generator. Click the first link, provide my IP address, a port number 444, start my hacktop machine, have a netcat listener on the same port. And uh, here's my favorite payload of all time when it comes to uh, OpenBSD machines is the MK5 Faro Netcat payload. Chuck that in there and URL encode it. And when I hit send, I have a reverse shell. Who am I? Root 
That was easy. Don't at me again. King of SSDIs. And at the end of it, when you really look at it, the core of the vulnerability is this single function here where the user input ends up. And uh, without any input validation, you know, you can control what goes into the HTML template. And if you can just specify the macro templating um, formula, you know, the dollar sign squiggly brackets, you can essentially execute arbitrary Python code. And that's the crux of all SSTI vulnerabilities, really. Um, if you understand that, you get all server-side template injection vulnerabilities in general across all sorts of languages. If you would like to do this challenge yourself, Hack the Box is the one that actually built this challenge, so you can practice SSTI skills there. So uh, definitely give that a shot. Spookify is the challenge name. And uh, check out my other videos. I've got some really fun videos coming out and really fun videos that I've already made. And guess what? We just hit 200 subscribers. Let's freaking go. I am so excited. Thank you for your support.